Okay guys, let's go take this thing for a drive, finally. Let's just hop right back inside. We can start it up. It's a beautiful sunset right now too. Oh, awesome. Hop right inside, put our seatbelt on, and let's get started on this Mazda 3 Turbo Drive. Right up to life this thing goes. And as we went over in our full interior, this is a fantastic cabin, fantastic. Um, yeah, so we're gonna leave it in drive right now. We'll put it in sport mode in a second to kind of give you guys an idea what that is like. I'm just gonna pop the navigation screen up because why not? Um, yeah, so when you put it in reverse, you do get reversing cameras. Really nice crystal clear display over here and the mirrors on the sides do fold down. As you can see right there, pretty nice stuff. Awesome. Love this display as well. And the turning radius is actually pretty good. So let's say we're gonna go from like parking space to parking space over here. If you guys a little glimpse of that. Not bad, not good. I'm wondering if the all wheel drive system may be making this better or worse, but it is a front wheel drive based vehicle. And front wheel drive based vehicles don't always have the best turning radius because all the stuff is packed up front, um, taking up a lot of room. But yeah, let's head out onto the road and see how this is like. And this beautiful POV night drive right here. We'll do a quick little launch of like 30 miles an hour here. Maybe we'll put it into sport mode. Traction control. I don't know if you can turn the traction control completely off in these Mazdas. Yeah, it's as off as it's gonna be. So let's just see what happens. Whoa. Quick launch to 30 miles an hour. When you put premium fuel in it, you unlock the full 250 horsepower versus 227 if you are on regular pump gas. A little bit of a difference there. Um, driving this thing, let's pop it back into normal mode for a second. It's such a smooth driving vehicle. It really is beautiful to drive. Very quiet in here, um, very refined. If there is a little rattling in my hear, it's probably the camera over there. Nothing on the interior I've heard has rattled as of yet. Oh my gosh, there's a deer right there. <laughs> let's watch out for that, guys. Oh, it's a baby, beautiful. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I was a little terrified. Um, yeah, this is a fantastic vehicle to drive though. So let's head out onto the highway so we can open it up a little bit in a second. Let's make sure we're clear over here. Pop it into sport mode, get a little acceleration test over here for you guys. Put on the brake. And there is 60. You guys can time that for yourselves, but it pulls hard. There is 320 pound-feet of torque in this vehicle, so you feel the torque, definitely, for sure, the most. Um, it's not the quickest thing on the planet. It's not supposed to be the quickest thing on the planet, and this six-speed um, automatic gearbox is fantastic, actually. Driving around town, you don't feel it, and that's the point of a fantastic gearbox, is you're not supposed to feel it. It's supposed to be a smooth shift, and this is fantastic at it. And it may not have the quickest shifts, but they're incredibly smooth, and I think that's way more of a benefit than um, other for this vehicle. And it's not supposed to be, it's not trying to be a super sporty vehicle. It's supposed to be a comfortable, refined vehicle with a lot of power and the capability to handle that power well. I think that's what Mazda was going for with this. Um, and Mazda is doing some really incredible stuff now. They're really kind of differentiating themselves from the rest of the segment by kind of going to this more premium route. I love the auto hold feature for brakes these days. Um, it's fantastic. But um, this entire interior, if you're not able to tell, is driver oriented. The screen's angled toward the driver. The entire cabin of this, or the cockpit of the driver is beautiful. Everything is within reach. Mazda spent a lot of time trying to make sure you have the best experience you possibly can get. And everything is adjustable to get you to that best experience. Oh, that was close. Um, um, so everything's in, in thumb's reach. The buttons on the steering wheel are in thumb's reach. So let's go. We'll just go into this on ramp right here really quick for you guys. Oh, actually, we don't want to go on 684. Hold on. Let's just see how it goes right here. Sport mode. The acceleration, like I said, is strong. And it's mostly that torque you feel. It is just a strong amount of torque. And Mazda has this thing they call... Um, this is awesome. G-Vectoring um, Control Plus. This has the plus version of their G-Vectoring Control. And you may ask, what is G-Vectoring Control? It's a really complex system that Mazda's been working on for over the past few years and refining. This has the latest kind of like application of it. And essentially what it does is the system uses your steering inputs um, 
and we'll change the application of the brakes and the torque of the engine to kind of turn you into the corner a bit better. So let's put it in manual mode and see what it does. Drop it down to first gear, second gear. No problem accelerating onto a highway. Make sure we're doing this safely over here. And the upshifts are pretty quick, actually. You'd be surprised how fast the upshifts are, especially in sport mode. Um, in regular mode, they are not as quick at all, which is interesting. But in regular mode, um, it's very much more comfortable, of course. So now we're on the highway, so you can get a, get a feel of the sound in here. It is honestly pretty quiet, actually. It's um, a little bit of a rough road. This is a suspension now. This is gonna be an interesting one. It has 18 inch wheels, so they're not very big. A little bit of like a summer um, tire on it, but this is Bridgestone tires. Um, it is a little stiff, actually. I wasn't expecting it to be this stiff. I'm not sure if the hatchback is different or if there's a different suspension geometry on that, but it is comfortable most of the time. And going over harsh bumps, you feel them, but they're not harsh. It, it is dampened pretty well, but it is you do feel them a little bit more. It's probably because of the lower ride height um, and you're not in an SUV. As I think everyone's so used to driving SUVs these days. But that's just one thing to point out. I'll try to find a rough patch of road to go over to get that in there. But so let's talk about the um, driving assistance system. So this one has radar cruise control and you activate it literally simply by pressing this button right here. And I'll push this button down and it's set. So I can, and it will go up um, by one increments if you push this dial up and down, or if you hold it, it'll go up by increments of five. And you can adjust your um, following control right here with this left button on the steering wheel. Really nice stuff. Now, I do have some complaints with this system, unfortunately. It is not the best on the market by far. If you want one of the better um, radar cruise control, adaptive cruise control systems, you're, wanna gonna, you're gonna wanna go with Hyundai, and honestly, Subaru's EyeSight system is fantastic, actually. So this may have lane keep warning, and I guess, I don't even know if they call it a assist on this one, but it doesn't do anything. So if you swerve out of a lane, um, it's just gonna vibrate that side of the steering wheel to let you know that you're swerving out of that lane. It'll show you in the display and in the heads up display as well. Um, but it doesn't turn you back into the lane. So I'm just gonna veer out quickly so I can give you an idea of this. Oh, it bumps you in a little bit, but it's, it's gonna play pogo sticks with like, kind of like ping pong with you. It's gonna bounce you in and out of the lanes. Subaru's system with their eyesight steers. It, it will steer the vehicle around the turn completely with hands. You're not, you're not supposed to take your hands off, but let's say if you did, it will steer the vehicle. And I know this, we have Subarus, uh, I, I, I'm very well experienced with these systems. So if you want something that's gonna be more um, active in that sense, you're gonna wanna go for a competitor system. But if you don't like these systems too much and you wanna drive the vehicle, Mazda's is best at being there if you need it, but if you don't want it, it's not there for you, that kind of thing. But it does work when it needs to. If you are veering out of a lane, um, it will bump you back in, but it's not the most aggressive system on the market. If you want something that's gonna be more closer to that hands-free experience, other competitors will offer that to you. Um, regardless, I do love how they integrate the, the blind spot monitoring. And it's kind of like a 360 degree blind spot monitoring system. And it shows you both in this display down here, as well as the display up in um, the heads up display. It'll kind of give you like these um, warning signs around all four corners of the vehicle. And I think that's fantastic. I really love that as a nice feature. Um, we're gonna get off this highway soon. But yeah, it's just a really comfortable experience. And it's really quick. If you wanna just turn this system off, just press the button and you're back into controlling the vehicle. Um, and passing power in this thing is not a problem at all. It is really quick and that torque is available like that if you need it. We'll just show you that right now. Kicks down with the six speed automatic gearbox. It's super quick actually. And look at that, you're already <laughs> doing over the speed limit. So you gotta be careful in this car sometimes. It's fun to use the power well, it, it, because it works so well. We're just gonna get off on this um, exit over here. And maybe we'll, let's see if we can get that G vector control to work a little bit well. So this is a cool corner. But yeah, the driving experience in these Mazdas are fantastic these days. They really do know how to handle themselves well. This nice sweeping bend over here. Experience that a little bit. And 
remember it's steering responsive headlights here. Wow, that grip is incredible. Yeah, this car, whoa. Okay, this does fantastic in the corners, guys. Again, it's not super, super tight, but that all-wheel drive system, you point it and it will pull you in the direction you need to go in. No doubt about that. And it pulls hard when you need it to as well. And then when you don't want it to, like I said before, simple, pop it back into cruise control and you're set. You don't need to do anything else. So I think that the driving experience is one of the best here, especially if you want that all round daily kind of driving experience. It's not too stiff, it's not too harsh, but it's also comfortable and has that ability to get you where you need to go a little bit quicker than normal. And the fantastic part is the fuel economy is not bad at all. I've been getting okay fuel economy just because I've been testing it out basically and you know, driving it a little bit more harder than I guess you would do in a daily setting application. But on average, when I did first get this, I was getting like 26, 27 miles to the gallon um, on like my daily commute. And that's pretty impressive for a vehicle with 200, up to 250 horsepower, 320 pound feet of torque, and it's a big engine. It's a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder. It's not a small power plant either. The brakes are pretty strong, actually. Um, one little complaint with the brakes is the pedal's pretty stiff. Um, I wasn't expecting that getting into it. Maybe just <laughs> I need to new brakes on my regular car. Yeah, so coming off the highway, this thing is just an instant cruiser. It's fantastic. And you may notice the displays are a little dim right now. You can actually brighten those really quickly with this little button right here. Super bright now, and it goes right back um, to that. So that's really nice. <clears throat> if you want to have a brighter display now or darker, really quick and simple buttons right there for you. This reminds me of Saab's night panel mode a little bit, but that's a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it just is this fantastic daily vehicle. And if you are looking for something under 40,000, this comes in around 35, $34,000 as this one is specified, fully loaded for the sedan. Um, fantastic. Best interior under $40,000, hands down. You're getting all the features you need and nothing you really don't need. It's everything you want um, in a vehicle. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, you got adaptive headlights, LED lights, um, it's everything. Navigation, Apple CarPlay, um, fantastic driving position, fantastic heads up display. It's just smooth, quiet, comfortable. It's a great experience and I have to really applaud Mazda for doing this in this vehicle. I'll just pull in this parking lot and we'll draw some conclusions. I also want to do a quick audio test for you guys. Oh, this is closed or not. <laughs> I do want to do a quick audio test for you guys um, so you can hear this fantastic Bose speaker system. So we had 12 speakers in the vehicle, really nice aluminum um, speaker covers on the front passenger seats. I don't believe the rear ones get those, unfortunately, but um, it sounds great. It really does sound great and we'll play a quick audio message for you guys right after we conclude this. But it really is just a fun to drive vehicle. And the steering, it's not the most communicative thing on the planet, but in this class, there's nothing that's as direct and as kind of like, as communicative as it is compared to other ones. So if you're looking at like an Impreza or something, or even a Civic or a Corolla, Corolla, that, that's a terrible thing. You're not gonna get anything in that, but this one has my favorite so far. Um, you know, always know where the, st where the wheels are, which is great. And it, it's great with the body. So Mazda uses their G Active Control Plus to kind of help you with the steering. So it reads your steering inputs and will make adjustments to the brake, almost like a torque vectoring system using brakes, but it actually does um, kind of reduce the torque within the motor, just not necessarily with any kind of differential or anything. Um, it's a really unique system and it helps you kind of move the entire um, car into a cor corner really, really well, really controlled as we saw earlier in this video. Awesome stuff here, guys. So let's just pull into this lot right here.